Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the needles from the cedar tree and we're going to chop it up into uh, tiny pieces and put it into a mason jar and then we're going to chop it off with uh, vodka and let it sit for about uh, two months. Anywhere from two weeks to two months. Everyone, all herbalists have different different time periods. Um, I'd say at least two weeks, two months is, is, is good. Um, and then you'll get to take home your cedar tincture. And cedar tinctures are good for um, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, we're going to talk about that later a little bit more, but one thing they're really good for is for urinary tract infections, also um, to help fight off colds and flus. It's antiviral. It's also antifungal. So for different types of fungal infections, both internal and external. It's also uh, anti-scorbutic, so this is what they were using to uh, battle scurvy. Mm. So vitamin C, right? Right. Lots of vitamin C. Awesome. I think there's a piece of cordage made out there already. In oh, the really? Tracking box, yeah. Cool. This stuff is a little hard. Yeah, I uh, think so it's... what we're doing here is we're going to make some cedar tea. And I'm going to make a strong cedar tea, so I'm going to put a lot of the needles in. And twigs and twigs and needles are what I'm adding to this. And what I want to avoid is uh, a boil. I don't want the water to get so hot that it's simmering or boiling too much. Vitamin C uh, is, is prevalent in these needles, and I don't want to destroy the vitamin C with the high heat. What, we're, what we want to extract out of cedar is a terpene called thujone. It's extremely uh, antimicrobial. Um, the only problem with that is that it's not very uh, water soluble. Its water solubility is pretty low. So what we're going to be doing is making this really strong. So it extracts more of the thujone. But um, I wouldn't suggest drinking cedar tea uh, all the time. I wouldn't suggest doing it for uh, weeks on end or months on end. If you're coming down with a cold, it's a really great thing to do. Um, if you just want to drink it every once in a while, it's perfectly safe to do it that way. Um, unless you're pregnant. If you're pregnant, then don't drink uh, cedar tea. Um, just as a precautionary measure, it can be used as an abortative. Uh, if you do want to drink uh, a fragrant tea uh, that is going to be healthy and high in vitamin C, instead of turning to cedar as a daily tonic, um, I would turn to white pine or balsam fir or uh, eastern hemlock is a really good choice. Um, it's not going to taste as medicinal and still going to get you a lot of, whole, a lot of vitamin C. So just like cedar is, is used for... Uh, to keep moths away and fleas and termites and other things like that. Um, physically, like the chips and in cedar chests, like the wood. Um, it's also useful to burn as a smudge to get rid of insects. A lot of times we will build debris huts in our earth living class, which is like just a bunch of leaves and, and sticks and to make like a, a little shelter for ourselves. And sometimes we'll go away for a day, a week, a month, and we'll come back to our shelter and a bunch of either critters like rodents or um, spiders, other insects have moved in. And a really good way to get rid of them is to take a bunch of cedar twigs and bark and put them in a piece of uh, larger bark or a shell or something like that or a bowl and uh, just let the smoke fill up the, the debris hut. And you could do the same thing with your clothing to help keep the bugs away. In Maine it's tough though. In, in the summertime in Maine, if you're in a buggy area, uh, not many things are going to work. It's going to be tough. But it helps a little bit at least. Um, also, Native Americans for, um, for thousands of years, and I, I'm willing to say that Natives from all over the world, wherever cedar grows, like up in Russia and areas like that, have used this plant as a, uh, a, a way to smudge away like bad energies and weird feelings and stuff like that, and smudge their homes to make it smell good, and to get rid of any um, bad feelings or bad energy, or if something bad happened in that area, just to clear it out. Um, it's been used for a long time in that way too. 
So physically to get rid of bugs, and then energetically or spiritually to get rid of uh, bugs too. And been used in ceremonies too for that same purpose. Yeah, they mention the same uses in like China. They do the same, the same yeah. uses, yeah. Uh, all the way to the top, as close to the top as possible. And then you're going to put the top on. And one thing to make uh, the medicine more potent would be to uh, shake it like once a day mm -hmm. or so. Just agitate it and get it moving around a little bit. It helps to extract, helps the al alcohol to extract um, the, the cedar a little bit. Um, and also, if you want to amplify the medicine even more, um, you can like. Uh, use your mind to uh, make it more powerful. So just like think happy thoughts or um, be thankful for the cedar. Remember the smell of it um, as you're shaking it. Things like that can really amplify um, the medicine. And it sounds a little crazy, but um, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But that's, what, that's how we teach it here. We, we call it shake and pray uh, twice a day or once a day. I usually forget to do all those things with my teacher. <laughs> but um, when I do remember to do it, it, it seems to add a little bit of extra goodness to it. Probably because you're building a, a connection with it. And then when someone comes down with a flu or a UTI or something like that, you're all excited to, to give them this medicine that you've put this energy into. Oh, we need to label that too. Labeling is important. About two months, you said? Um, or is that I, the minimum you do? Uh, I would say two weeks is the minimum. Make sure to cover the pot with the cedar sprigs in there. Um, typically when a plant is very aromatic, uh, it means that it has volatile or essential oils in it. And as the plant heats up, the oils will evaporate along with the steam. And so we like to keep a top on it and that will keep the essential oils in there. And then they'll hit the top of, hit the bottom of the top here and they'll drip down and condense on the top layer of the the tea. So if you want a really, really strong tea or you want to condense that, um, those oils, you can just skim off the top and use that. Or there's ways where you can put a bag of ice in the top, in, in this top here and see how the top slopes down. The steam will come up with the essential oils in it. It will hit the top and it will automatically condense because it will be cold and it will drip down. And what some people do is they put a little dish, the raised dish in the center of the cedar tea so that those essential oils will drop right down into that little cup. And that's how you can get, um, you know, a, a, an effective uh, essential oil without spending a lot of money on it. Um, you only get a few drops, but if you need it in a pinch, that's how you can get it. Awesome. And, and cedar is very uh, aromatic, so it's got really good essential oils in it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a cedar salve, and we're going to make it out of beeswax and olive oil and cedar leaves and cedar twigs and the end result should be a like uh, like a lip balm type consistency and it will be I think I'm really excited to try use try to use it for um, fungal infections like some people um, will not take care of their feet properly in certain situations and um, they'll get like uh, foot rot or, or fungus on their feet um, and things like that. And cedar is so antifungal that I think it's going to work really well for that. Um, also, you mentioned eczema. It'd be worth researching to mm -hmm. see if, if it would be good for eczema and things like that. Um, I'm trying to think of other uses. Uh, we should research some more uses. I know that it's got a whole ton of different uses as an external uh, salve. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a whole bunch of twigs and sprigs and we're going to put them into a pan of oil. And the, the place where most people mess this up is in two places. The first one is they get the oil too hot. And then it burns uh, away a lot of the good stuff in, in the plant material. The other way that people mess it up is they add either too much oil or too much beeswax. And then it gets like either really runny or like super hard and it's hard to rub onto a place. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to move into the kitchen. And we've got oil, we've got a bunch of beeswax. 
Um, I think we're going to want to get a grater and grate up the, uh, the beeswax so that we can put it in. The best way to do it is to um, mix it and then we're going to take a spoon and we're going to take a spoonful and then put it on the side to cool. Mm -hmm. And once it cools, that will be the consistency of the, the mixture. And then if it's, if it's too loose and runny, we'll add some beeswax. If it's too hard, we'll add some wood. That's what we can come for yourself. And uh, you could try that. So what's uh, plantain and comfrey good for? Um, plantain and comfrey are really good for external wounds. Um, we want to be careful with comfrey because it re uh, it's such a, so good at regenerating skin and cell growth that if it's a puncture wound, we, we, wanna, we don't really want to use comfrey because it will heal the skin before it heals um, the internal uh, damage. But, and bruises, uh, scrapes, uh, shallow cuts, um, it's so great to use. I put it during the winter time when my skin's dry because it's um, really cold out and windy. I'll put it, I'll just take a whole bunch and I'll rub it into my hands and I'll put it on my face like this and it keeps my skin really moist, especially under my nose it'll, where it gets chapped. Put it on my lips, things like that. So for, for, for winter dry skin? Yeah, for winter dry, great dry skin it's awesome. It's really good. Um, plantain and comfrey uh, are also emollients. They'll keep a wound um, moist so it can heal up better. Um, you can pretty much ask anybody in this community uh, a plantain or a comfrey story and they'll be able to tell you like amazing healing abilities. Uh, plantain and comfrey were the major ingredient that I used when I had staph infection on my foot um, past summer. I also used garlic and um, acorn. So it's, it's good stuff. What is comfrey? Comfrey is a, I can show you the skeletons outside, it's a plant that grows about this high and you can find it around old homesteads, um, it's got fuzzy leaves and uh, very uh, a pronounced venation, um, it's extremely nutri nutritious, uh, we use the root powder, we use the leaves, stuff like that, but I can show you the skeletons outside. Alright, so we're going to add oil to this pan, and very important to keep the heat low, especially at first. We don't want to burn the oil, we don't want to burn the herbs. So, I'm not sure what we're going to start with, but maybe we'll start with two cups, and see what happens. nice and low and once this heats up we're going to add the plant material in there and we're going to let it uh, extract under low heat for about 40 minutes or so. In the meantime what we could be doing is I'll go get the beeswax in the other room and we'll get a cheese grater and we can grate the beeswax so we can measure it easier. Uh, the other method you could use that um, intuitively feels like it'd be more effective uh, you can put you can make an oil tincture, just like we did with the alcohol, but with this in oil, and you can put it in a windowsill, so the sunlight's hitting it, and it's, it's warming it up, and you leave it there for like two weeks, three weeks, a month, something like that, and it will extract it more slowly, and then you use that oil, um, heat that up with the beeswax, and then mix it together to get yourself. Um, have you tried that, Lily? Is that what you were saying? No, but I remember Chris suggesting it because we were making a salt with lemon balm and he was saying that heating it up might kill the things in it that are good that yeah. trying to use, so yeah. doing that might be better. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what I remember, when I've done this with Arthur Haynes before, uh, I remember we heated it up in the pan for longer than 40 minutes, uh, so maybe we'll keep it in there longer and we could keep it really low and if it's stable and low then we can uh, eat lunch and then come back to it and just keep an eye on it during lunch um, this afternoon. So. With the other method you'd still need to heat it up to melt the beeswax or yeah. can you melt the beeswax separately and just add it? Ooh, maybe you could. I don't know. I've never done that method. 
It would take some prep time. Usually for classes we do it this way because it's a whole lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, and we always forget to do the prep work because we're so busy doing other stuff. And mm -hmm. How did you know that was too hot? Um, Smile for the camera, Nate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe bellowing a little bit. Like smoking, really this is Nate, otherwise known as Alex the Lion from Madagascar. <laughs> working on my mane here. <laughs> A bomb! Right now we're making an herbal mouthwash, uh, mostly from cedar. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make a really strong tea out of the cedar boughs, and we're going to add it to a little bit of vodka for a preservative. And it's, the ratio is going to be for every one cup of uh, water-based tea, uh, there's going to be two tablespoons of vodka. So what I like to do is get the water to a boil and then add in the material, the, the cedar boughs. Uh, instead of bringing it to a boil, we want to avoid having the cedar boughs actually be boiled because that's a really high temperature and it might kill a lot of the... Uh, chemical constituents inside the plant. So I brought the water to a boil and then turned off the heat and now I'm adding the plant material, putting it in there and I'm just going to give it a quick stir to get it all submerged under the heat of the water and then I'm going to cover it to trap in the essential oils and I'm going to let that sit for about uh, 15 minutes or so. So what I did was I strained out the plant material mm -hmm. and so now we just have oil. There's a little bit of plant material still in there and I'm going to scoop the final pieces out with this uh, fork. And then we're going to take, this is two cups of oil. and. The ratio we're going to try first is two cups of oil to a one half cup of beeswax. And so what we do is we shred it up, we put it in here, and I don't know if this is going to be enough, but we'll find out. Put that in here like that. I'm going to spread it around. And I'm going to mix it in. And shredding it up allows us to get a good measurement and also allows us to, um, to have the beeswax disintegrate faster in the oil. It's almost already gone. I can smell it. it smells good. It smells like a salad. And the way we're going to test it for consistency is we're going to take a spoonful. This still looks a lot, uh, way too oily. But we'll test it anyway. And what we do is put a little bit on a, on a spoon and then we're just going to let the spoon cool. And you can accelerate this process by putting like a, an ice cube underneath it or something. But it's uh, February in Maine. <laughs> it's not that warm in here, so <laughs> this should be good enough. Um, it should cool down in a few minutes, and then we'll check the consistency. Can we get a pile of ice or something? Uh, yeah, sure. Grab some snow. <laughs> and so that's how we check the consistency. And okay, so we've made some mouthwash here by making a strong tea out of our out of our cedar and now we're putting it through a strainer with a little bit of alcohol of vodka in there to make a mouthwash so how did we make the the tea? um it was 
I think one and a half cups of water for each jar. So three cups of water in there. Okay. Um, didn't quite boil it and then capped it to keep all the oils in. I think okay. we had it sitting for over an hour. Okay. Instead of warm. Let me get this uh, tip up on its side a little bit. That's it. That's it. Cedar mouthwash. And it's looking pretty good. It's a little on the soft side, but it, it's still a solid. And um, it still has that soft consistency, balmy consistency, that as soon as your finger touches it, the heat from your finger will, will melt it enough to rub it onto your hands. Uh, rub it onto your face, onto your lips, uh, underneath your nose in the winter time when your nose gets chapped from uh, from blowing it. Um, in the winter time, I don't mind having my sobs this uh, this runny um, because the the weather's cold. But um, in the summertime, if if you have a, a runny sob like this to begin with, and then you put it in your car or you put it in a your cabin and it's getting hot. Uh, it'll it'll melt, especially if it's in your pocket. Um, it'll melt and, and get really runny. So um, maybe uh, a one to two ratio of beeswax to oil for winter sobs, or one to three. Uh, this is a one to four right here. Um, what we're gonna do is um, this is still warm. It hasn't solidified yet, and I'm just gonna ladle it into these jars here, and then cap them, and then that's the, I'll call it a day. If you want it to solidify quickly, you can put it in a refrigerator or out in a snowbank somewhere. Mm -hmm. With the caps on or off? Uh, with the caps on. Just so it doesn't spill. But it doesn't really matter. And again, uses for this salve, um, since it is cedar, it's antimicrobial. Um, one of the really cool aspects of cedar is that it's highly antifungal. So when we're talking about um, a fungal infection or a wart, um, something like that, uh, or it, since it is antimicrobial, we can apply it to wounds. Um, to kill off any nasties, kind of like an antiseptic. Um, it also may work for different skin diseases, uh, random rashes, things like that. Um, it does have thujone in it, which um, in high doses over long periods of time could be harmful, but um, in, in smaller doses over the course of a week or two, um, it's, it's safe as long as uh, you're not pregnant. And I would use this to work with uh, a specific condition. Um, I wouldn't just be using the cedar salve um, every day. 
uh, for, for everyday use for moisturizing your nose, your face, your hands, I would be using like a plantain, comfrey, something like that. Um, this is for a specific condition and if it's not working after 10 days or 2 weeks, um, stop using it, uh, switch, switch your uh, protocol or uh, consult a uh, professional. And that's it. Cap it and make sure to label it. Labeling these things are important, especially with the plant material not in there. Uh, it's hard to identify. Oh, well, I guess you could smell it. That might, that might help you idea it. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> This much is really okay. rocking there. Uh, it's an abalone shell, so I don't know where it, where it comes from, but it's traditionally used like in different places of the world. Some people just use regular shells, but these are perfect because they have those uh, holes here for mm. vent. And we use we use the smoke cedar um, and sage for uh, ceremonies and um, uh, like next week we have a healing and philosophy class and we'll do a lot of um, uh, we'll do a lot of smudging in that class just to clear out uh, different energies that come up what we're demonstrating here is a basic um, effective bow drill form Oh, in this set we have a cedar spindle and a cedar fireboard and a hardwood hardwood handhold and also a hardwood bow. So I've already I've already burnt in a hole and carved a notch. Actually, I probably should do another one here. Give a place to start a start burning in a hole here, the spindle, put a little mark in the fireboard, knife, alright, so, alright now I have the uh, bow drill set here, I'm going to start by burning in a hole. And you'll see the form here is I have my, my arm and wrist locked in to my front leg and keeping my front foot really close to the, um, on the fireboard, really close to the spindle. And this allows me to adjust the pressure just by leaning, leaning forward rather than holding it out and trying to balance it. I have a good secure platform in order to start. So right now I'm just going nice and easy. Building up a little bit of heat, getting a good, good rhythm going. Now, give it a little more speed, a little more pressure. There. Now, what I've done here is make sure that I've I've started my uh, burning in my hole by making it the same diameter as the spindle so it's coming all the way up and I burned all the way up to edge here and this diameter it's the same as the hole now we're gonna carve a notch Let's save this dust now a notch I like to think of is kinda like a an eighth of a pie piece going almost to the center of the center of the burn here. 
probably could have made this hole a little closer to the edge, but we'll just have to dig a little bit more for it. You know, I really can't think of much that's more enjoyable than doing something like this. Making up a bow drill set, starting a friction fire. Good way to spend a day. Alright, so I've made about a, an eighth of a pie piece just about to the center of the, uh, the hole that I burned here. This is going to allow a pathway for the dust to come off the edge and then fall onto the, the welcome mat here I got set up. Right. We're getting a good rhythm going here. Oh. <laughs> good rhythm. <laughs> Take two. I can't do the same when the camera's on, it's so much harder to get a goal. Yeah. <laughs> Still smoking. The fact that it's still smoking means that there's probably a burning ember inside the, the dust. Ooh. So I'm not in much of a hurry here. to let that coal hang out. It's gonna do nothing but get a little bit bigger with time. Yeah. And stronger. Yeah. Yeah. So now. But the batteries will all <laughs> run out of time. <laughs> hurry up. <laughs> Take your time, but hurry up. Timelessness in a timely fashion. Oh. All right. So the coals were placed in the tinder bundle, which is also cedar. being afraid to blow hard on it. Once it's in your bundle, the texture is good and it's fluffy and fine. You can blow pretty hard on it. There you go. And hopefully it starts walking towards the fire. <laughs> I started a little ways away there. <laughs> Got a few balsam fir twigs, but mostly cedar in there. And right now, the tinder bundle is going to act as an extended match. Hopefully, there's enough twigs in there, fine enough. One of the issues with cedar tinder bundles is that it doesn't really produce a good flame. It spreads the ember, but you really have to keep blowing on it for it to go into flame. 
a lot of other uh, accelerants like birch bark or uh, other dry fluffy material usually um, produce a better flame. Seems a little bit moist too here. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully the twigs are dry enough. They were gathered uh, off the ground, or they were gathered when they when they weren't on the ground. Yeah, off the tree. Off the tree. And then there's a bunch of dry cedar kindling over here, Nate, that you could put on top oh, of the water. And this should give you a good idea of how, how well cedar burns. It dries out quickly, it burns hot, and it burns fast. It doesn't make a good cooking fire because it won't produce a nice bed of coals. But if you need a lot of heat fast, it's fantastic. And a lot of light fast, too. It's great for starting fires. Cedar kindling is, is really high quality kindling. Cedar bark's a little tricky, but it, it'll, it'll